today on the TMZ Podcast. Hello and welcome to the TMZ Podcast. I'm Charlie Cotton and joining me today is TMZ Sports' own Ed Lewis. What's up, Charlie? How are you, man? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you so much for having me, as always. Of course. Well, you're joining us today because we're doing this thing where we're counting down five to one of big stories that happened in 2023. And we've got you on to discuss the biggest stories in sports this year. God, we got some big ones. Why, why don't you kick us off with the fifth biggest story? Yeah. Conor McGregor was accused of sexual assault. Uh, uh, and while he's been accused of, of these kind of heinous acts prior, it was kind of the time and the date and the place of this that yeah. made this one so unique and so story worthy and so newsworthy. Uh, uh, you'll recall this one happened in, in one of the the game four of the 2023 NBA finals. This featured the Heat and the Nuggets. It was in Miami, and we talked about this on the pod. Uh, in Miami, there is a nightclub inside of Miami's basketball stadium, which at the time, I remember, we laughed about that. How is that possible? Pretty dope. Uh, uh, he allegedly meets a girl there. I, I think that's not even alleged at this point. It's on video. He meets a girl there, but uh, they allegedly go into a bathroom where she claims he sexually assaulted her. Uh, uh, the case went on for a long time. Uh, it ultimately ended up in no charges. Uh, the the D, the district attorney, the, the prosecutors said they they didn't have enough evidence to 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 find out if if he did or didn't do these these uh, alleged acts. Uh, Connor maintained the entire time that he was innocent, that they went in the bathroom and there was nothing uh, heinous that happened in there, uh, and that was it. But it was just a wild story. I mean, mm. the, the story was so crazy that Connor McGregor is at this NBA Finals game, uh, and you remember that night he knocked out a mascot as well oh, in the halftime. On the time, court, on the, the court, yeah. It was just a, like this UFC fighter comes to an NBA Finals game and all of a sudden he is the story, not the NBA Finals. Yeah. It was just a crazy, crazy night. Um, well, he was lit. Like he was lit even in the middle when he punched the mascot. And then later on, you do see the video of him leading a girl into a bathroom and then the security standing in the way of the door. Now, what the woman claimed was that all the stuff went down behind closed doors and that the security guard there was preventing her from like, it was almost imprisoned her in that bathroom and Conor McGregor got to have his way with her. Now, obviously there wasn't enough evidence to, for this to go any further, which, you know, uh, you have to believe that then Conor didn't do anything then if that's what the law says. But if I was Conor McGregor's wife, it, I would still not. Wasn't she pregnant at the time? Yeah, as well? she just had their kid. She just, uh, oh. yeah, yeah. So, so at the time of the allegation, she was you know midway through her pregnancy. Uh, but we we got a lot. This thing was so nuanced. Uh, we got a lot of video after the alleged assault. Now, obviously, this doesn't prove anything or whatever. But after the alleged assault, they were back at the club, seemingly drinking and having a good time and and playing around with each other and and this that and the other. Uh, I will say, I remember getting the the closing documents in this case. Uh, prosecutors, when they close a case, they sometimes release documents, and we were able to obtain them. Uh, and prosecutors basically said she was texting her friends like I had just met Connor tonight, and 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 one of her friends that was with her that night said she showed no signs of like. Uh, uh, being hurt or anything like that. And th so they basically said, you know, we don't have enough evidence to, to prove that anything happened here. So it's just but it's such a unique and wild it story. It was. It was. Okay. On to the number four sports story of the year, The Blind Side. Remember Blind Side, that movie? I do. That, this was such a big story when Michael Orr, who is like the man who is covered in The Blind Side, this football player who's kind of down in his luck and a, and a white family takes him in and helps him to – go to college and then helps him make the NFL. It, it, it's a beautiful story with Sandra Bullock. Um, but he came out this year and said that he didn't get compensated properly for they, they, they depicted his life story. And now he wants to sue the family that took him in the Orr family. Is it the Orr family or some it's other? The Tui's family. The Tui's. Tui's. He's, yeah, a, yeah. he's a Michael Orr. Yeah. So the Tui's, he wants to sue the family that took him in and supposedly as part of the plot of this movie helped him with his career, he's saying, no, you guys actually stole from me. And, and not only that, he claimed that they never adopted him in the first place. Uh, he claimed that they put him basically into conservatorship in order to take advantage of him uh, uh, in this uh, setting uh, where they basically were able to to negotiate deals on his behalf when it comes to the blind side or the book, you know, that, that came before right. the movie, The Blind Side. Uh, and then they kind of screwed him out of the money uh, uh, afterwards. Uh, now, the Tuies have been adamant that they did not screw him out of anything. They 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 they're adamant that they still consider him a son. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. They said that the conservatorship was basically the only way that they could get him 
into college uh, uh, because they were boosters at the time uh, uh, at Ole Miss. Uh, it's, it's a lengthy story, but they were boosters at the time at Ole Miss, and the NCAA had rules at the time governing, like, well, if you're a booster, you can't, like, lead a kid to the school. So they had to put him in conservatorship uh, in order to kind of help him get there, uh, and that's what they're claiming. But uh, he has said from – this is kind of the final straw here, but he has said from the get-go that this whole blindside thing has been a lie. I remember he was saying uh, when the movie came out he didn't really like it because it depicted him as dumb or never having a bed before, and he, he says that's not exactly the case. And now he's saying that, look, the Tui's never even adopted me in the first place. So right. uh, kind of bombshell allegations, you know, that that this movie that we all loved – I mean, I love that movie. That was one of my favorite movies, and I know it's – as as sports people, uh, it's one of the best sports movies of all time. Is now Michael Orr saying – None of it is true. Right. I mean, the Tui's claim that this was just all like a shakedown attempt that, right. you know, he got paid, you know, a, a, he got paid a, a $138,000 at the time, which, yeah, isn't that much if they're depicting your life story, but that this was the deal. This was the contract exactly. they signed, he signed, and th- th- you can't go back on it now. Um, I think that that is such a good movie, The Blind Side, and every, it's so close to everyone's hearts. They should do a Blind Side 2 now. <laughs> <laughs> about everything that's happened since. Wouldn't that be like, now it's a drama. It's, it's come from like a sweet story to like, now it's like conflict and Sad. drama. But, but how do you end the movie? <laughs> you know? like, oh, by the way, everybody hates each other now. We're moving on. You know, like, know. Know. That's for the directors to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> then, they, then they make up a lie there too. And then now all of a sudden Michael Orr is going after them here. But yeah, I will say though that the Tui's did uh, uh, negotiate at the time. Like you said, it may have been a bad deal at this point. Now we know how big this movie is. Right. Uh, they didn't uh, know at the time when they negotiated the deal. It does, yeah, it doesn't seem that they knew this is going to be the most massive movie in sports history, maybe. Right. Uh, uh, they they said each one of their family members separately got 138k, and they claim in court documents that over a 10 installment period or whatever you want to call it, they gave that money to Michael, and that's all he's owed, and that's all they owe him. And so that's where the the battle is now. Okay, crazy story. On to our number three story, which surprisingly happened in 2023. It feels like it happened ages ago. You want to read it out? Uh, Damar Hamlin suffering cardiac arrest. I that mean, was this year? I, I can't believe that either. It feels like seven years ago. Uh, but yeah, January 2nd, Monday Night Football. One of the biggest games of that year. I mean, everybody, and not to minimize this, but everybody's fantasy football season relied on this game, <laughs> let alone like the the, the, the Bengals and the, and the Bills' is. Uh, season. Real seasons. Yeah. Like this was such a monstrous game, and very, very early in the, in in the game, uh, I think it, it might have been the first quarter. Demar Hamlin went to go tackle T. Higgins, got hit right in the sternum, and it stopped his heart. Uh, uh, he basically died on the football field. Bills trainers raced to his aid. They were able to revive him. He went to the hospital. He made a full recovery. He's since been able to play football. But it, it, it's. I, I, I it's got to be one of the ten most impactful st- sports stories ever. Yeah, I, I, everyone was wearing Demar's number then. Um, he is colors. a household name. He's a household name, and he's not even a good football player. <laughs> right, you know he really what I mean? Isn't. Like he can't get on the field. It, yeah, for, for for someone to die before our very eyes on the football player on the football field, and it and it and it is what kind of happened before he came back to life, obviously. But for you to witness that as you're just watching an NFL game. It was just such shocking. The announcers didn't know what to do. Yeah. The, the organizers of the game didn't know what to do. And eventually they just canceled the game, which yeah. I, I've never seen before. Right. And in, in, in a time where, like I said, this was such a massive game. It had so much playoff implications. And like I said, money implications when you're talking about fantasy football and betting. And it had never been done before. I mean, we, when, when COVID happened, they canceled games. And everyone's like, this is crazy. How could they cancel games? And now you have somebody, like you said, just a backup player getting injured. And they canceled the game at, it, it, it was such a crazy story. But tomorrow, like we talked about, made a full recovery uh, and is now like a hero. Uh, he, he's going around and, 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 and explaining the importance of, of AEDs and, and, and heart safety and all that stuff. So yeah. It's, it really changed the world. And, and uh, leading into it, too, Bronny James. I mean, that's, that's part of the big sports stories of the year. Bronny suffered cardiac arrest during USC workout oh, as that's well. Right, that's and, right. and, and a lot of people credit Damar Hamlin for USC's training staff kind of taking the the the, oh. the necessary steps towards AED, AED education and how to how to revive people and how to you know get to their aid early you know so uh, it it really did I, I it's again one of the most impactful stories in sports history. Why is he playing again though? Like bro, hang it up, hang up the cleats and go out there and do be an influencer or you know like why are you out there trying to 
lightning doesn't strike twice until it does. You know, I don't want to be, oh out, I don't be out there. I don't want to be out there. I, 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 don't. I wouldn't be at work doing the podcast if I had had a car yeah. let alone playing. Yeah, it's 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 a very scary thing. I mean, I will say Damar is young. He, he's in his 20s, so he doesn't know any better. I mean, we're in our 30s. You know, it's a, it, life. Wise, yeah, yeah, I'm a little bit like, okay, I'm not going to do things that could kill me twice. You right, know? So, right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's his passion, and uh, who knows how much longer he has left to play, and that's always the thing about NFL players. It's a very short lifespan in the NFL so it's you know let me get all I can and then you know in year two three I'll I'll be this celebrity okay the number two sports story of the year is Aaron Rodgers suffering his torn Achilles on the fourth snap of the (laughs) season this was such a big story because there was so much build-up so much build up to Aaron Rodgers moving from Green Bay to New York. He he came out on the field that night, round one, with his American flag. <laughs> this is going to be huge. Everyone in America watching. It was just like, what? This team is going to win the Super Bowl, maybe. Get, play four. Tears yeah. his Achilles out for the year. Jet sucks. Like you said, I mean, this didn't just start on September 11th when he tore his Achilles. I mean, this ha- this has been almost September years. September 11? Yeah, September 11th. This, oh, this- New Yorkers were already having a bad I day. And now yeah. it's, oh, uh, no. This has been years in the making. He has been beefing with the Green Bay Packers for so long, or he had been beefing with the Green mm-hmm. Bay Packers, his former team, for so long. And every single year is, are they going to trade him? Is he going to leave? Does he want out? He finally gets out. He handpicks New York. He says, I only want to play for the Jets. They send him there. He goes to the Jets. He brings all of his homies everybody comes coaches players uh, friends boys whatever everybody comes and they are like this guy is finally going to do it we finally have a quarterback in New York and four plays in tears his Achilles it's uh, just a tragic comedy you know it, what I mean it's just like you gotta like that is so unlucky so <laughs> I, you'd hate to be him so much I mean there's still speculation that he'll play again this season potentially right uh, I don't know about that. And that's the other part of this story that's even crazier. So he tears his Achilles, but then for the next six to eight weeks, we're talking about, is he coming back? How? How can you come back from a torn Achilles? It's that whole, the whole saga of Aaron Rodgers from the trade to the buildup to the, to the tear to now the comeback is just one of the craziest stories. Because love him or hate him, like you're interested in what he's doing and he's a celebrity outside right. of football you're not now. Football, right, yeah. Like he, he dates celebrities. He's, he hosts Jeopardy sometimes. Like he's not just a football player anymore. And so like everyone's invested in him rightly or wrongly, or they want him to succeed or want him to fail. But God, that was a. I remember that night. That was a big night when he hurt his Achilles. Yeah, it's just crazy. And and we should say that they went on to just have the most horrific season. Like uh, his backup Zach Wilson played terribly. They got blown out in most of their games. Oh, no. You know, so it was like oh, it ended no. up really poorly for the Jets. Okay, Ed, why don't you give us the number one sports story of the year? <laughs> well, it's this one actually was very far away from a court. Britney Spears got slapped by Victor Wembanyama's security guard. If you don't know who Victor Wembanyama is, he is the San Antonio Spurs number one overall draft pick. Uh, not just that, though. He is a phenom, uh, the, the most touted prospect since LeBron James, uh, seven foot four, handles the ball like a point guard, but obviously is built into a center's body. Uh, uh, he's just this... How tall is he? He's like seven, seven four. Feet. Yeah, Seven four? It just this otherworldly human being and happens to be in Vegas at the Aria uh, going to a restaurant inside. Britney Spears obviously knows him because he's a seven foot four phenom in the next LeBron James. She goes to tap him on the back to try to be like, hey, like, what's going on? And his security guard, obviously knowing that that my job is to protect Victor and he's the biggest star in the world right now and he's the biggest up and coming thing in the NBA, slaps her in the face. Kind of accidentally, I would say, right, like, right. because Britney is rushing up behind Victor Wembanyama and behind the security guard. And it's a bad idea to run up behind someone because it makes people a bit edgy. Right. And so the security know, guard knows he's got a job to do, especially because they're in Las Vegas for this, you know, preseason tournament and there's lots of people, lots of eyes on Victor. And so this crazed blonde lady, you know, wearing sunglasses inside. <laughs> screaming in a British accent. Screaming in a British <laughs> accent. Right. Rushes up and he like, I think instinctively flails backward, does a bit of the Draymond Green, like <laughs> flails backward and knocks off her sunglasses and it takes her by surprise. She almost like, you know, has to dawn on her what is actually going on. And she was upset after that. She was pissed, she demanding an apology from Victor himself, even though he wasn't the one to do it. <laughs> and this sort of like mainstream story meets sports story, 
you know, combined to make the biggest sort of sports story of the year. Yeah, we should say, too, that uh, he he was in Vegas for his first summer league games, and these were his first times ever wearing an NBA uniform. So, like, the, the hype surrounding him that week in Vegas was crazy, and that's why maybe the security guard was a little bit on edge because – Everybody wanted a piece of Victor yes. in Vegas that weekend. And it was just, we got to get everybody away from him. We, there's too many crowds near Victor, and that's perhaps why it happened. Uh, I will say that Brittany tried to press charges, and cops ultimately saw the video that we obtained where you could just tell it was just like, ah, and accidentally hit her yeah. in the face. And so no charges were filed. Victor ultimately never ended up apologizing, despite Brittany basically demanding it. And, and the story just kind of died. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Brittany's been involved in a lot this year, even the biggest sports story of the year. I know, right? Unbelievable. All right, Ed, have a great holidays, mate. You too, man. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you guys later. Goodbye.